We are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. We heard that Kali Maharaj came and he was beating cow and bull. So Shonaka inquired to why he simply punished him. Please describe all these incidents. And also we heard O oh, Sutta Gosami, there are, I will read from this because it is a better context. Shona Karishi inquired, why did Maharaj Parikit simply punish him, means Kali Maharaj, since he was the lowest of the Shudras, having dressed as a king and having struck a cow with his leg? Please describe all these incidents if they relate to the topics of Lord Krishna. And we also heard the devotees of the Lord are accustomed to licking up the honey available from the lotus feet of the Lord. What is the use of topics which simply waste one's valuable life? So those who are devotees, they only want to hear about Krishna and things related to his service, not other things, because they already understood that is valuable services of Krishna is the only thing valuable. All other things are waste of time. And we also heard, O Sutta Gosami, there are those amongst men who desire freedom from death and get eternal life. They escape the slaughtering process by calling the controller of death Yamaraj. Bhaktivinoda Thakur told there are two kinds of conditioned souls. One are, I think, Pratya, Katma, and other is something, means those who are outwardly going and those who are turning towards Krishna. Both are conditioned souls, but two dispositions. So some men in this world, they are interested in eternal life. So they will call uh, by calling the controller, how here it is further, as long as, long as Yamaraj, who causes everyone's death, is present here, no one shall meet with death. The great sages have invited the controller of death, Yamaraj, who is the representative of the Lord. Living beings who are under his grip should take advantage by hearing the deathless nectar in the form of this narration of the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. So they invited him here. That is why they are free. Yamaraj is not giving death. Death is given by Krishna because he is supreme controller. He is giving the fruits of our actions. Yamaraj is his instrumental, but he is a representative of Krishna. We heard from our Gurudev and also other Vaishnavas because this topic also was recently coming that birth, death, marriage and children, they are, according to Prarabdha Karma, you will get or not get. And that cannot be changed. What kind of activities we did in previous life, those fruits which are now bearing fruit in this life, in the form of this body, no one can change that. 
and everything is written there <coughs> at what moment you will take birth at what moment you will have to give up this body it is already written and whether you will get married or not or how many marriages or how many children already written everything you cannot change so then the question came from my side but for marriage one has to decide to get married or for children also he has to do certain action to get so how to harmonize these that something is already fixed in your Prarabdha karma, but at the same time you also have to work for that. Means you have to decide for that. If I don't decide, then how I, I can just get? You cannot, even for marriage, someone may propose you, but you have to agree. It cannot happen just without your consent or, or this. So it is harmonized by Vaishnavas that according to your past uh, karma, at a certain period of time, due to the result of that, and that result will come, strong desire to get that will come. And you cannot resist. Like some someone will propose you and you will agree you cannot resist so in that way you will get that karma it is that fruit fruit will first come in the form of desire then you will be compelled to do that action willingly means you will desire you will decide for that then you will get that fruit that is in normal case but for devotees, prarabdha karma can be changed. Only for devotees, not for anyone else. They may, uh, when that uh, result will come, it will touch you and there, that desire will be there. But devotee, by the strength of his devotion, and or by the blessing of Guru and Vaishnav or Krishna, he can also not go for that action. He has that power by the by the grace of Krishna. No other living entities cannot. But devotee can have. If he surrendered, then it is not necessary. Still that will touch him in the sense of desire, but he will not fulfill and not get that fruit he will destroy. So here also we are hearing, they are hearing Harikata. Uh, Hari Lila Katamrita, we heard last time, Hari Lila Amrita. Uh, this is Amrita, means uh, nectar you will find in heavenly planets. They also have nectar, but that is not real nectar that it will give you immortality it will give you long life all demigods they have very long life so it is sometimes said the demigods are also immortal and they are drinking the nectar of immortality but it is explained it is not literary meant like that it means a long life but this lilamrita is actual nectar of immortality because it is transcendental and we are Upanishad you will find Amritasya Putra we are the sons of Amrita sons of immortality Supreme Lord is immortal is eternal we are his sons we are also immortal but we are now entangled here in this Maik uh, temporary things misidentifying but in reality we are immortal so this harikata hari lilamrita is transcendental so those who will hear this they will escape that yamaraj is also hearing harikata so they are calling him so 
it is like if you have if you have some connection with police, your father is policeman or something, you may do something wrong, but they will not catch you because your father is there. They they will somehow uh, make some arrangement. You will not be arrested like that. Yamar, if Yamarach is sitting there, then how that will come? So only by devotion, by actual devotion, because devotion is eternal, you can destroy prarabdha karma also. Only by devotion. Otherwise it is impossible. And there are some examples in Shastra and also in practical life we heard about our Padman Maharaj. He had no desire, but it was written in his hand and in horoscope and everything that at the age of 30 he will get married. When that age came, he told me personally, he said, yes, that time I felt unbearable, intolerable desire. But, and I was trying to, to not, but I could not. Then I was chanting Nrishinga mantra and while I was chanting the Rishinga Mantra, I got that idea, that um, indication that I should uh, write to my Gurudev. So Padmanabh Maharaj, that time Brahmachari, he wrote to Gurudev one letter and told him what is going on. Then Gurudev wrote to him back that uh, this is very good, you opened your heart. This is sign of Vaishnavism. Simple heartedness is Vaishnavism. So you should see this Kirtan of Bhakti no Thakur. It is in accordance with your situation. And you do that. What he is uh, showing by example that in that song. So Padman Maharaj did that and he could escape that. Like here, they're escaping death. We can escape birth, we can escape death, we can escape any kind of worldly, this old age or, or marriage or children, all this. We can escape by devotion only. It is possible. Mandasya, Manda Pragyasya, Vayo. Manda Yushash Chavai Nidreya Hriate Naktam Diva Chavyartha Karma Bi. Lazy human beings with paltry intelligence and a short duration of life pass the night sleeping and the day performing activities that are for not. Let me see what is paltry. Intelligence. Lazy human beings with paltry intelligence and a short duration of life pass the night sleeping and the day performing activities that are for naught. very small or meager paltry intelligence. Means they are not devotees, so they are here, I will read the commentary. The less intelligent do not know the real value of the human form of life. The human form is a special gift of material nature in the course of her enforcing stringent laws of miseries upon the living being. Those who are averse to Krishna, uh, she is giving this. It is a chance, this human birth, to achieve the highest boon of life, namely to get out of the entanglement of repeated birth and death. The intelligent take care of this important gift 
by strenuously endeavoring to get out of the entanglement. But the less intelligent are lazy and unable to evaluate the gift of the human body to achieve liberation from the material bondage. So here I think lazy means in the uh, in the in the sense of lazy for spiritual life, because you will find conditioned souls they may be very busy whole day and night they are working, but for what? For other material things. But if you tell them to serve Krishna, they will not. No, I have no time, I, I cannot, uh, like this. So means lazy in that case. Our Gurudev used to tell us that sometimes some household devotees, they came to Gurudev and they said, Gurudev, we have desire to serve, to come to the mat, to attend the function, Harikata, Arati, we have desire. But what to do? We are householders, we have so many duties, so many responsibilities. We have no time. Though we desire, but we have no time. For you, it is easy. You have given up everything. You are just chanting Haribol, Haribol, Haribol. You are getting everything. But we have so many things to do. So we have desire. Then Gurudev explained to them. Yes, okay. Do you find time? How many how many times during day you eat? Then they say three times or four times because that is necessary. If we will not eat, then how we will be strong and how we can work? So Gurudev said, this is your answer. You are feeling the necessity of the body. So you take time, although you may be working whole day, but still you will take time for lunch, for dinner, for that. You In office, you will say, now I will go to take lunch. You will take time. Because you feel that necessity. But you are not feeling the necessity of your soul which is Harikata, is devotion to Krishna. So you are not feeling that type of hunger. Mother, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. When you feel some necessity, then somehow you will invent a way how to get that. Like some people who are addicted to drugs or alcohol or something, they will find some way how they will get that because they, they want that, it is their necessity or for food will take time. So, Gurudev said, because our Atma is not awakened, that is why we don't feel this necessity, so we think we have no time. But if we would feel that necessity, we will find time. We cannot remain without that. Like fish cannot remain without water. Devotees, they cannot remain without hearing and chanting about Krishna. It is impossible for them. So Gurudev gave an example of that old Mataji in Calcutta Mat. There was a bad, very bad weather. No one even went out and anywhere. And she was living a little far from the Mat. But in spite of that bad weather storm, she came to the Mat and was hearing Harikata. Then Gurudev asked her, how is it that you came? There is a very bad weather, no one goes anywhere, but you came, how is it? And she was an old lady. Then she said, yes, I know, it was very bad weather, but I was in the house and they were only speaking those worldly topics again and again and only that, uh, blah, blah, only speaking. So I was feeling suffocation. I could not remain there. I had to hear about Krishna and do Kirtan of Krishna, so I had to come. So in spite of very bad weather, because it was her necessity, she came 
not other, no one can. So Guru said, yes, your Atma is awakened. You are feeling this necessity and you don't like those. Like here, they said, if it is related to Krishna, then tell us. We are not interested in other topics. That is waste of time. So here also. So Gurudev gave one example during Second World War. Hitler was the dictator and his right hand man was General Goering. But that that was before Second World War. Uh, not during, but before. So once Goering in one newspaper he explained that he recruits people for his army. How? When people will come, he will divide them into four groups. One is uh, clever, means intelligent, and industrious. He's very working. Industrious means likes to work. Then another is clever or intelligent and lazy. Another group is stupid and industrious. And the fourth group is stupid and lazy. So Gering said, I take into army uh, clever and industrious and clever and lazy. I take them, but I make the chief general, one who is clever and lazy. Then they ask him why he is the leader. He has one quality less. He cannot work hard. Then Gering said, because it is not in our interest that we will always fight. So if I put the, the, the clever and industrious in a leading position, then always he will fight. He will start war somehow. He will start war because he has to always do something. So he will fight. But this clever and lazy, under strenuous circumstances, if it is absolutely necessary, he will try to avoid at any cost. But if it is very necessary, then he will fight. Not easily, because he's lazy. So uh, it is not in our interest to always fight, so I give this one. And I also accept stupid and lazy in my army to solve employment problem. He's stupid, but because he's lazy, he will not do much bad work. So somehow I can manage to solve the employment problem. He will do wrong work, but he will not do much because he's very lazy. But I am very far away from those who are stupid and industrious. Because they will always do wrong activity and they will always with great effort they will do so it is very difficult to to correct them so then after explaining this then gurudev asked us so to which group do we belong we belong to the group of stupid and industrious why because we are stupid we have no knowledge of who i am that I am eternal servant of Krishna, I think I am this body. That is foolishness, this stupid, again, ignorance, and very industrious, 24 hours, always working only for this body sense enjoyment, all the time working. So we have no time to serve Krishna. We are here, it is in, uh, less intelligent are lazy to get out. No, the uh, 
less intelligent are lazy and unable to evaluate the gift of human body to achieve liberation from material bondage. They will not do bhajan. They are lazy for that. But they are very busy for getting worldly things which ultimately they will give them suffering and keep them in this world and more and more perpetual suffering will be there. So we are stupid and industrious, means going in the wrong direction. But here, those who are intelligent, they will understand the, uh, the value of this human birth and they will immediately do bhajan of Krishna. So here, Sai Maharaj is further telling these less intelligent, they become more interested in so-called economic development and work very hard throughout life simply for the sense enjoyment of the temporary body. And they cannot take anything with them. All that money, all that uh, house, every, they cannot take anything. So what was the value of working so hard? That, that fact was there, you heard, in Punjab. One man, he was working in bank. And he was earning good money. And he was a very miserly person. He had a family, but he did not make a nice house and also did not give, uh, did not buy quality food and always cheap doctors and like this. All the time, miser living with his family and, but he was saving that money all the time in the bank, depositing. So in that time, he deposited one lakh. That was like a huge money that time. But he came and again he would collect, he came up to 5 lakhs, means 500,000 rupees at that time. It was like billion now. Then he became sick and doctors told he will die in a short period because such disease is there and he will die. So what he did, he asked one his friend who was working in bank. Now he was already retired. That uh, man was retired on that bed and he had one friend who was still working. So he told him, you bring me that money, that 500,000 rupees, you bring me. So then that man, he had to bring in cash, but he put in bags cloth bags and on top he put some vegetables. So it looks like outside that these are the bags of vegetables. Then he brought that money and that man, he was on that bed. He said, you put it on me, on my chest. You put that money and they put and he was embracing and ah, and moving like this and embracing that money and then he left the body. So how much attached and how much he could bring with him. Whole life he was living uh, on a very low budget, no enjoyment, only saving, 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 never enjoying anything and ultimately what he could take with him, nothing. So it happens that uh, we are throughout life simply for sense enjoyment of the temporary body. But this man, he was working, but even sense enjoyment he, he did not take. Sense enjoyment is also allowed to the lower animals by the law of nature and thus a human being is also destined to a certain amount of sense enjoyment according to his past or present life. That is karma. Pralad Maharaj said to demon boys, no one wants disease or some suffering, but still it comes. Why? Because of our past actions. Like that, because of our past actions also good health and this worldly happiness will come. So why we should uh, work for this? No need. We will waste time. We should worship Krishna. 
that will automatically dump, uh, come. You don't bother about that and that you don't make that your life goal. All, all energy you are spending for that. No. Some energy for devotees has to be spent for maintenance for the sake of doing devotion. But only for that. Uh, once Gurudev told me, Prahlad Maharaj said, some time should be spent for this. Some time, not whole time. Some. And in relation to devotion in a proper way and for the sake of maintaining this body by which you will serve Krishna. Sai Maharaj here continues, herein it is said that during the daytime one works for nothing because the aim is nothing but sense enjoyment. We can particularly observe how the human being is engaged for nothing in the great cities and industrial towns. There are so many things manufactured by human energy, but they are all meant for sense enjoyment and not for getting out of material bondage. And after working hard during the daytime, a tired man either sleeps or engages in sex habits at night. That is the program of materialistic civilized life for the less intelligent. Therefore, they are designated herein as lazy, unfortunate and short lived. So this is misfortune. If someone uh, did not get that awakenment by the grace of Sadhu and past Sukriti, that he will understand that life is not meant for this. But unless one gets this, he will think in this way. The life is meant for sense enjoyment and I have to work for sense enjoyment. There is nothing beyond this. So we have to somehow try to, to make them do some Sukriti, knowingly or unknowingly, so that they may uh, get that understanding that life is not meant for this, it is meant for service of Krishna, then they can be happy. This will be compassion to them, actual welfare. To give them more and more sense gratification, that is not compassion to them. Compassion is to somehow inspire him to serve Krishna, but he will not accept. So somehow or other we have to help him do some Sukriti in some way, then that will help him either in this life or next life, that will be real compassion to him. Sutta Uvach Yada Parikshit Kuru Jangale Vasat Kalim Pravishtam Nija Chakra Vartite Nishamya Vartam Ana Tipriyamtata Sharasana Samyuga Shoundir Adade. Sutta Gosami said, While Maharaj Parikit was residing in the capital of the Kuru Empire, the symptoms of the age of Kali began to infiltrate within the jurisdiction of his state. When he learned about this, he did not think the matter very palatable. This did, however, give him a chance to fight. He took up his bow and arrows and prepared himself for military activities. So that this is virtuous fight. As a Kshatriya, he has to protect the citizens from criminals. So, that is proper fighting. But if it is for selfish purposes to get more money, to get more land, to get more anything, then that is violence, that is wrong. But this is right fight. Solankritam Shyama Turanga Yojitam Ratam Mrigendra Dvajam Ashritah Purat 
Vritoratashva, Dvipapati Yuktaya, Sva Senaya, Digvijayaya, Nirgata. Maharaj Parikit sat on a chariot drawn by black horses. His flag was marked with the sign of a lion. That is Mrigendra, the chief of animals. That is king of animals, that is a lion. Being so decorated and surrounded by charioteers, cavalry, elephants and infantry, soldiers, he left the capital to conquer in all directions. Bandrashvam Ketu Malam Cha Bharatam Chotaran Kurun Kim Purushadini Varshani Vijitya Jagrihe Balim. That is why now I remember Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Nadhanang, Nadjanang, Nasundarin Kovitang Bajagadisha Kame, Mama Janmani, Janmanishwari, Bhavatan Bhakti Rahoitukitui. O oh, Jagadish Supreme Lord, I am not praying to you for money, nor for worldly relations, for children, wives, servants, maid servants, these, they all, or disciples for some worldly motives. I am not praying to you for this. Also, I am not praying to you for worldly, this, knowledge, learning, arts, all these things, I'm not praying to you. Poetry, no. These are all worldly things, temporary. So I'm, I'm not praying for this. I am praying to you, birth after birth. I pray that I may have causeless devotion to you, may I have your service, I am not requesting you for liberation. That is why Mahaprabhu told, Janmani Janmanishar. I am not requesting for liberation from birth and death. Because according to my prarabdha karma, my karma, what is to come, let it come. I may be born as animal or as bird or in hell or in heaven or wherever. According to my karma, let it come. But I am praying that always let me have devotion to you, let me get your service. And in another song, Bhakti Thakur told, uh, let me be born in the house of a devotee, then I can get opportunity of devotion. I don't want to be Brahma, in Brahma Loka, with such a long life and so many things material, if I have no devotion to you. I don't want that kind of birth, nothing. I want only your devotion. That is intelligent. Other things will only give us suffering on, in the end, because they are temporary, so inevitably they will end and there will be separation grief due to attachment. So this is what we require and we should try for getting that should do that practice, how we can get pure devotion. Maharaj Pariki then conquered all parts of the earthly planet, Badrashva, Ketumala, Bharata, the Northern Kuru, Kim Purusha, etc., and exact, exacted tributes from their respective rulers. Means tax they will have to give because he conquered them. That is, uh, we are also praying for that. Our Gurudev explained, what is the meaning of Jai, Digbijai, conqueror of all uh, directions, Digbijai. Bijai or Jai means victory. So, like one king goes to fight with another king and he conquers him, then whatever that king, defeated king had, all land, all men, that king, all queens, everything belongs to this king now and can be used for his service because it is his own now. 
like that when we are saying jai gurudev ki jai or jai shri shri guru gauranga gandharvika giridhari jiv ki jai means may you may victory be yours may you conquer me you make me your own and you engage me in your service that is my prayer this jayadvani means prayer in one sense it can mean all glory you are singing the glories of guru gauranga or you can pray to them you make me your own you conquer me you engage me in your service without your grace i cannot get your service so you kind of grace me with your service this is jayadvani so here he conquered and they had to pay also mahaprabhu told prem bina byarta daridra jivan das kori betan more deho prem dhan this life without love of krishna is poor and futile useless without love of krishna life is always poor someone may have millions of euros or dollars or rupees billions but still he is very poor if he has no love for krishna because that is all for nothing and it is temporary he will lose it in due course of time and useless no use of that life that is why mahaprabhu told das kori beton more deho premadhan therefore you kindly employ me as your servant and you give me salary what is that salary love for you more service of you you employ me we have to make this application we have to request kripaya tapa pada pankaja stita duli sadrishan vichinta o supreme lord by your mercy kindly think me as your das at your lotus feet make me your servant engage me in your service that should be our prayer and aim otherwise we will waste for nothing tatra tatro pashrinvana svaparvesham mahatmanam pragiyamanam chayashah krishna mahatma shuchakam atmanam cha paritratam ashvatamno stra tejasah sneham cha vrishni parthanam tesham bhaktim cha keshave tebyah parama santushta priti ujrim bitalochana mahadhanani vachamsi no vasamsi dado haran mahamana but if it is the desire of krishna like that or gurudev then one can marry and have children for the service of krishna to cooperate for the service of krishna only in that case that is useful otherwise it is not wherever the king visited he continuously heard the glories of his great forefathers who were all devotees of the lord and also of the glorious acts of lord krishna he also heard how he himself had been protected by the lord from the powerful heat of the weapon of ashwatthama people also mentioned the great affection between the descendants of rishni and prita due to the latter's great devotion to lord keshava the king being very pleased with the singers of such glories opened his eyes in great satisfaction 
out of magnanimity, he was pleased to award them very valuable necklaces and clothing. So this, he was pleased with this, with devotees. devotees of the Lord and the glorious acts of Lord Krishna. He heard from them Harikata. Saratya, Para, Shada, Sevana, Sakya, Dautya, Virasananu, Gamana, Stavana, Pranamam, Pranaman, Snigdeshu, Pandushu, Jagat, Pranatim, Chavishnor, Bhaktim karoti nri patish charanara vinde. Maharaj Parikit heard that out of his causeless mercy, Lord Krishna, who is universally obeyed, rendered all kinds of service to the malleable sons of Pandu by accepting posts ranging from chariot driver to president to messenger, friend, night watchman also, etc., according to the will of the Pandavas, obeying them like a servant and offering obeisances like one younger in years. When he heard this, Maharaj Parikit became overwhelmed with devotion to the lotus feet of the Lord, that is Bhakta Vatsalya, that intimate sweet delightful relation where Krishna is affectionate to his devotees and directly serving them also. And here Maharaj Parikit became overwhelmed and that South Indian Brahmin, we heard, he was hearing and he was reciting Gita, although he did not know Sanskrit, but he had firm faith in his Gurudev and in Krishna. Gurudev told him this Bhagavad Gita is not different from Krishna because it is coming from his mouth, this transcendental sound. So you have to, daily you have to recite with great devotion. So because he had devotion to Guru and to Krishna, the meaning of Shastra was automatically revealed in his heart without knowing Sanskrit. And Krishna himself came in the form of Mahaprabhu to hear his Gita recitation and revealed himself. So Mahaprabhu asked him, why you are crying if you don't understand? He said, I did not tell to others, but I have to tell you because I feel you are some great spiritual personality. I should not hide from you. I'm getting darshan of Krishna inside my heart. And I see how Arjuna is ordering him to bring his chariot in the middle of army. So when I see how the owner of all worlds and here in this verse it is, Krishna is universally obeyed. Everyone has to obey him. Sun, out of fear of Krishna, he's shining. Moon, fire, everyone is working out of fear of Krishna. means they are all under his control. But such controller and owner of everything, he becomes controlled by the devotion of his devotees. So they, those devotees, when they see this and when they hear this, they become overwhelmed with devotion to the lotus seat of the Lord, because this is one of the most beautiful qualities of Krishna, this affection for his devotees and being controlled by them. Tasyaivam vartamanasya purvesham vritim anvaham nati dure kilash charjam yat asitam nibodame. Now you may hear from me of what happened while Maharaj Parikit was passing his days hearing of the good occupations of his forefathers and being absorbed in thoughts of them. Dharma padai kena charan vichayam upalabhyagam 
परिचते स्माश्रुवादन विवादसम इव मातरम द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ रिलीजियस प्रिंसिपल्स धर्मा वाज वांडरिंग अबाउट इन द फोरम ऑफ अ बुल एंड ही मेट विद द पर्सन इन ही मेट द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ अर्थ इन द फोरम ऑफ अ काउ हु अपेयर्ड टू ग्रीव लाइक अ मदर हु हैड लॉस्ट हर चाइल्ड she had tears in her eyes and the beauty of her body was lost thus dharma questioned the earth as follows so this we will hear tomorrow how bull who is the personification of dharma religious principles met personality of the earth in the form of cow and why she was unhappy and suffering and what will be the remedy all this topic we will hear uh, tomorrow there are some vaishno so we, if after that we will have time we will continue this otherwise later on so this topic is very important to hear shila bhakti vaibhav puri gosai maharaj told at that time to think very deeply <clears throat>